Hello folks, hope you're doing well. If you've been following my recent posts, I'm sure that now you have a somewhat basic understanding of how dimensioning works in construction. You would also have a basic framework on how to measure areas in square feet and square meters and also how special units work. Let us now learn about FSI or FAR. In some states we use the acronym FAR which stands for Floor Area Ratio and in some other states we use FSI which stands for Floor Space Index. In both cases they mean the same thing. It essentially tells us about the amount of built space that we can construct over any given plot. Let us understand on the drawing board. First let us select a standard unit size such as square feet or square meter. Let's go with square feet. Second, let us take the plot size, which is usually given in bighas, kathas, lesa, etc. Suppose we have a 2 bigha site. From my earlier post, you already know that 1 bigha is approximately is approximately equal to 10,890 square feet. So, since we now have a 2 bigha site, therefore, this comes out to be 21,780 square feet. For a third step, we will need to identify the abutting road which is this one right here which is adjacent right next to our site that is the road that will allow us the entry and exit from our site so this road which becomes very important for us because it will give us the amount of frontage and also the setbacks that we need to keep all around our site for construction to occur on this site. On a side note, let us now understand about setbacks. The term setback refers to the distance or the length that we keep from the periphery of our site towards the center to form the footprint of our building. So this becomes the footprint and these becomes the setback. So in total, we have three different kinds of setbacks, which is the frontage, the rear setback and the side setbacks. So combining these four spaces that we leave from the periphery of the site, we get the building footprint. Now let us understand about this setback table, which has been sourced from the NBC, which also stands for the National Building Code, that for a building with height up to 10 meters, which is usually a G plus 2 building, having an abutting road width of less than 7.5 meters will have a frontage of 1.5 meters, a rear setback of 1.8 meters and a side setback of 1.5 meters. Similarly, for abutting road width of 7.5 to 18 meters, the building will have a frontage of 3 meters. In the same sense, an abutting road width of 18 to 30 meters will have a frontage of 4.5 meters and an abutting road width of more than 30 meters will have a frontage of 6 meters. The rear setback in all these cases will remain to be 1.8 meters and the side setbacks will remain to be 1.5 meters. We have to note here that all these reference points are for residential detached buildings only. Because there are many sorts of buildings which can be industrial in nature, maybe semi-detached or maybe of other forms. 
So these setbacks change in accordance to the National Building Code, which is a set of bylaws which decides how this frontage and setbacks are to be allotted for any site. A point also has to be made that this table right here, which has been sourced from the National Building Code, varies according to the development authority presiding over any given state in India. So there exists a priority order that we always have to follow. Therefore, the local municipal bylaws are the most important. Then the priority is given to the National Building Code and then at the end the priority is given to the Model Building Bylaws. So the local municipal bylaws becomes the most important whenever we have to construct anything on any given site across any state in India. Now, for the fourth step, after finding out the width of the abutting road and thus applying the setbacks according to the bylaws, we now know about the extent of the allowable building footprint on the site. So this becomes the building footprint after we find the setbacks provided to us through the local municipal bylaws. So this becomes the footprint. Let us calculate the achievable built area using the preset FAR for the site. Let's say the FAR assigned to this site is 1.5. As already said, FAR stands for Floor Area Ratio. Therefore, we have 1.5 is equal to Floor Area divided by the site area. which is the formula for FAI. Now, we already know that the site area is 21,780 square feet. So we have this. Therefore, the total achievable built area becomes 21,780 multiplied by 1.5 which comes out to be 32,670 square feet. So this becomes the total achievable built area according to the FAR, which is 1.5 in case of this set. So now we have the maximum built area, which can be constructed on this particular site. According to our calculation, this area right here cannot exceed 32,670 square feet, which can be constructed onto a single ground floor or can be broken down into multiple vertical floors if the setbacks do not allow construction on a single floor. However, it's up to us to decide whether or not we want to utilize the entirety of the maximum possible FAR allotted to us or not. It depends upon the purpose of the building. So if I am a builder looking to sell apartments, it would be in my best interest to aim for the maximum possible FAR, 32,670 square feet in this case, and then demarket it efficiently into modular sellable units of say 1,000 to 1,800 square feet. These are the area scales for a typical 2 to 3 BHK apartment. However, the module sizes that I'm talking about are sufficiently large and comfortable spaces. In the case of certain low budget apartments, these module sizes can be smaller as well. That is compromising on comfort, of course. The similar can be said in the case of commercial spaces too, where sellable area becomes the top priority. Commercial areas usually have an FAR in the range of two and above which is greater in comparison to residential areas where the FAR usually lie in and around 
let's go over some important points before we end the video. The FAR associated with any plot is already predetermined according to the location of the concerned plot. This is set by the development authority on the basis of the land use map of the area, which segregates the plots in a city on the basis of context such as commercial areas, residential areas, green or eco-sensitive zones, government-owned areas, etc. All these types of zones have their own affair according to various criteria. It often happens that we may be given added affair in addition to the FAR already allotted on a piece of property. This is subject to the fact that we fulfill certain requirements. What requirements you ask? For that you'll need to follow my future posts. I'll be sharing more on this later again. Follow Build with Chinmoy for more facts about architecture, design and construction. Till next time, cheers.